Hey guys, Kev here, and it's time to talk about Jack Wolf Knives again. It is the time of the month, as we say. So I actually filmed a short unboxing video of this knife, and I did delete it because I felt like I got carried away. I got off into the weeds about uh, the pinchability, and then... I also was filming it like the day I was moving and I was kind of like just all over the place. But um, some of my critiques in that unboxing do stand. They are valid, I think. But um, I carried this through my move. So if you guys don't know, it should be obvious because I've been talking about it like crazy. But I just moved. And um I carried this the entire time. Um, it's been, you know, four days, five days since the move, and obviously leading up to the move, uh, we had to pack a lot of stuff. But I opened a lot of boxes, packages. Um, just, I realized some things during this move. One of them was that having a Leatherman is absolutely crucial. Um, I've used my Leatherman more than anything in the last week. Um, but this was right behind it. Any box I need to open or cut down or package I need to open, this thing absolutely just dominated that task because it is so good. I mean, uh, I had to put other knives away um, because I was feeling like they just weren't doing what I wanted, just cutting cardboard and stuff like that. And I ended up rocking my, um, Pioneer Jack, that is what this is called, and my Devo Buzz for the most part during the move. And holy cow, what a combination. These two together just obliterate cardboard and packaging. So... Anyway, this is the Pioneer Jack. It's the newest installment from Jack Wolf Knives, and it is awesome. So that is why I would like to preface this. I have fallen head over heels for this knife. Is it my favorite Jack Wolf of all time? No. And we'll get into why. I think it's somewhat personal. Um, I think there is some critique to be had there, but it's also very subjective. And I think if you're in the traditional world, then you kind of already know your your feelings on this matter, if that makes sense. But let's compare it to some other ones and then we'll um, we'll talk it through. I have been carrying it in my Lancelot leather slip. This slip was made a long time ago for the tactile bear and it actually fits the Pioneer pretty well. I mean, it does kind of bulge it a little bit, but it's already a super slim slip. So this feels, it just disappears in my pocket. Um, and it fits size-wise really well in here. Um, I I am waiting on a slip from Troy over at Northwoods Leatherworks. Um, as soon as I get that for the you know knife-specific slip, I'll switch that out. I like having his slips that show a little bit of the the handle. But uh, Joe's work is phenomenal. If you're looking for a slip, you know. Uh, these slips are great for if you're like me where you have knives coming in and out maybe you don't want to buy a slip for every single knife like I do right um, this will fit a lot of different knives which is cool so let me reach over here this is the feel good jack this is a Northwoods Leatherworks slip by the way and um, this is probably my current favorite jack wolf knife and this will come in handy for a couple of reasons during the uh video here but anyway you can see size wise they're not too far off right in terms of length you can see the length here is very similar uh, once we open them up i'll show you this knife for the first time look at that beautiful Beautiful blade. I would call it a sodbuster pattern. Apparently, Case kind of owns that. I, I don't know. I've always called knives that look like this a sodbuster. I've seen them made by other companies and called that, so I'm not sure. But um, man, it's just a gorgeous pattern. I've always wanted a pimped out sodbuster, and now I have one. So, anyway, open. You can see we'll go pivot to pivot here. 
Again, we are very close. The feel good has a little bit left over, but the blades are lined up identically. But you can see tip to tip here, but the handle on the Pioneer comes in a little bit further here and then ends a little bit further here. So what that tells me, I think, is we're getting a little bit more blade to handle ratio on the Pioneer versus the Feel Good, which I think makes some sense because this is a drop point and this is a um, sheep's foot blade, but I'm not sure. You can see the beautiful just snappiness on this Feel Good Jack. I mean, it's my favorite for a reason, but uh, anyway, let's set it aside and talk about the Pioneer Jack. This comes in five variations. Uh, I'm going to try to remember them all off the top of my head. I apologize. It just moved. I'm a bit all over the place, but I really want to get a video up and um, I just want to talk about it. I, I just love this knife. I mean, it has come in so clutch for me and it, it's sort of unexpected. Like when I first got it, I was a little uh, like it was just the fact that I had trouble opening it that gave me pause, you know, um, and I thought, you know, if I can't rip it open and close a million times in a second like I can with some, you know, because I'm a fidget machine, then I don't know if it's going to be one of my favorites, but carrying it. And this is where giving a knife a chance, you know, putting it in your pocket and not just going, eh, um, can really pay dividends, you know. Um, after carrying it, it is one of my favorites. It's it's so good. Um, so it's just funny how things happen like that. But, um, yeah, so we can talk about the walk and talk, and then we can look at the design because there's a lot of cool details here. But, um this one came pretty stiff. Um, that was the other thing in that unboxing that I, one of the reasons I just scrapped it was it was sort of stiff. Like the spring tension's great, right? But it was tight. There is no play in this at all, which I've handled a lot of slip joints at this point. It's impressive when you get a tight ass pivot on a slip joint and it has the bouncy walk and talk. That's really hard to get right. Um, and this one came tight to where I even tried to loosen. I was like, yeah, maybe the pivot's just a little tight, right? And that probably is the case. If I was able to loosen this a little bit, it would probably start hopping a lot more. But when I tried to do that, it just was spinning on both sides. And I told myself, Kev, just let it go. You know, I'm the guy who has to fuck with everything. And I, usually I make things worse and then I make them better after again. But do they ever get better than they were? <laughs> you know, so I'm like, Kev, just chill. You know, luckily I was really busy and I just like, just couldn't. I was like, all right, just don't fuck with it. Let it break in. And I just carried it, used it, carried it. Say that again, carried it, used it, fidgeted with it, all of that stuff. And it really broke in. So you can see... Got a nice pop to that half stop and then a nice break down to the close, right? And then you'll see there, you don't have a ton of area to pinch, right? Now, I'm not the best person to speak on this for most of you because I'm left-handed. So it's, it's really different. When you have a knife like the Feel Good where you have right a ton of space to pinch it doesn't really matter what handed i am you know it it's it just doesn't make a difference so we can talk about walk and talk a little bit more and you can take my take on it a little bit um better as a righty but on this one it's tough because Left-handed, what I do is, this is the same thing I've, I've always done on my Vampire Jack, and this is very similar in terms of space and everything. I take my index finger and I just dig into that nail nick. And then I grab with my thumb and just pinch and I pull. And that's how I open it, right? 
So usually I don't do it like this. I do it with the side of my index finger. So the side of my index finger is digging in and then my thumb is grabbing and I'm pulling it up. Okay, so this is what fidgeting with it looks like for me. All right, and you can see it digs in quite a bit. And what I've noticed is if I get real sweaty-like, which happens to me a lot because I'm, I guess, just the sweaty dude, it really starts to slip. And if I don't have these dry hands like I happen to have right now, it's game over for me. But I've found 100% of the time that I've needed the knife that I've needed to open the knife to do something, it's always been able to be opened. No problem. It's just when I'm sitting there fidgeting and thinking about it, right? Um, like it's in the moments where I, it doesn't, it's not really that important that it happens, but it is a thing, right? But when I don't have that problem, you can see it. It's, it's super easy for me to open. So I really think it's it's a me thing, um, but I do want to put it out there so those of you who maybe are sweaty like me, you know, but right-handed, I think it would be easier because you have your thumb, right? So you can just dig your thumb in here and pull. Um, I struggle with that um, just because I'm left-handed. You can see I'm like uh, just an idiot with it right-handed, but you have a lot, I think you can get a much better grip right-handed, right? I just have weaker hands right-handed, so, um, I don't know, but I wanted to talk about that, um, but the walk and talk, I think, is phenomenal, especially for being as tight as it is in the pivot, um, centering is very good, Damn near dead center, maybe slightly over to this side, but again, slip joint, tight in the pivot, great walk and talk, slightly over, doesn't bother me at all. We can take a look at this one. Yeah, this one's maybe the same way, could be dead center, but it doesn't bother me on a slippy for some reason. There, I got something in my eye here. Um... Now, some of the cool things on this knife, there's a lot of them, but uh, you have the standard triple flute design from Jack Wolf Knives. That's kind of his thing now. He's doing the triple flutes on most things. Um, and I dig it. I'm here for it. So I hope that doesn't jam. I'm sure it will at some point, but for now it's still happening and I like it a lot. Um, damn it. What the f is this thing in my eye? Got like a rogue hair or something. It's just bugging the shit out of me. Hard to concentrate. Um, this swedge really gets me. So you see this angle right here? Just see how that comes down? I don't know what it is, but that alone just gets me. Gets my juices flowing. Just look at how that looks from the top. Just starts arrowing down. And then you have this cool prism look or whatever you want to call it. Geometric shape right here. So like when you're just looking at that whole area on the spine of the knife. It just looks so cool. That swedge is baller, dude. And then um, Ben talked about this before. But you still have that really nice hollow grind. But... He left it a little bit thicker um, because this is this is really the first Jack Wolf that is meant to be like a working knife. You know what I mean? Um, I think the Sodbuster, if you look at it, like I'm not sure if um, I think they do. I think GEC makes one, right? Um, and they make it in their uh, what's their line? like farm and field line or something. It's kind of like their user line or whatever. Um, and so this pattern is really meant for being used. And I see that here. And that's why he left it just a little bit thicker 
than your your jack your average jack wolf. Um, it's still a thin knife, right? Like most of them are are stupid thin. Um, we can take a look here. Zero this guy out. Switch over to inches, right? So this one. Again, this is the uh, feel good jack. That's seventeen thousands, and you can see I am well. I don't know if you can see actually. I am well behind the edge. So if I try to sneak up right behind the edge, it's going to get silly. Yeah, 12 thousandths behind the edge, right? Now this guy, I'm guessing, is going to be closer to 15. No. Nope. Fifteen thousands. Fifteen to seventeen. So obviously not the most accurate reading. They're not you know the the way the calipers are angled and everything, but um that pretty much, you know, Jack Wolf knives I think have been anywhere from like nine to twelve thousands behind the edge, pretty consistently across the board. And I would say this one's probably closer, you know, 12 to 15, right? And that's still slicey as all hell. Um, and she slices, trust me. Um, she takes care of boxes, no problem. Really a pleasure to use. Um, the tip, you know, it's a drop point, so it's not going to be like a sheep's foot where you can just jab stuff and slice, which is really good for you know, Amazon boxes and cutting boxes and stuff. But for an all-arounder, this is fantastic. I had an absolute blast with it, um, cutting boxes and such. Now, the ergonomics, man, it's another just home run here. Large glove size hand just melts onto this, and you have this sort of thicker area down here that just wraps you really nicely. Um, the edges on the inside are not chamfered and I didn't really notice it until this knife, but they all are like that. Um, so I don't know why I noticed it just a little more on this one when I bear down. Um, but it's not like uncomfortable or anything. It's just like, Hey, you can tell they're, you know, they're not chamfered there. Um, the inlays are really cool. I just love how this tapers down and then swells out. It's just really cool how it's all done. Um, the, this is weird, but um, Friday Night Gas Station, I don't know why you'd ever use a slip joint to defend your Slurpee, but if you ever did, it is one of the most comfortable knives in a reverse grip because you just wrap here, and then you have this beautiful little spot to rest your thumb, and you could fuck yourself up to heart's content if you want to it's gonna close on you but hey um okay so the versions right let's get back to that you know left off there a while ago um there's five versions as usual with jack wolf knives this is the one i went for toxic fat carbon i i just have an obsession with jack wolf and fat carbon camo carbon whatever I feel like that's what my collection had. I just feel like I got to keep it going. I also aesthetically am just drawn to it more. Um, there's going to be, a believe, now I might forget some of these, but there's a plain tie version. Do you have a tie version? Um, there might be a jig tie version with hand satin. I know there's one with hand satin. I think it might be jig tie. Um, there is an Ultim version. Ultim, baby. So we're seeing Ultim and Jack Wolf now, so you'd have an Ultim scale here. And I'm not sure. I think it's just the belt satin on that one as well. I think on this run, there's just belt satin and hand satin. Um, so you have also a, I believe, dark matter blue fat carbon. So I think it's dark matter blue, toxic, 
Ultim, and then um, Jigged and Plain Tie are your five. Pretty sure. But obviously, you can just check the most recent post on Jack Wolf Knives. They post constantly on Instagram. Um, you can go to the website. You can also go down in the description. There's going to be links to a bunch of dealers that I have affiliate links with that carry Jack Wolf knives. So you can check those out. It does help the channel if you go to those dealers. But I'll also list the Jack Wolf uh, dealer list down there so you can check out all of their dealers. And yeah, I mean, to wrap it up, guys, the Pioneer Jack is really good. Um, I'd say... On this one, more than any other one, it's a really good user. Um, and I don't normally say that kind of stuff because I just, I'm not a big user. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but this one just turned out to be perfect for what I was going through when it showed up, which is very, very interesting that that's how the timing worked out. I literally got this knife two days before I moved. And those first, that first day that I had it, I was kind of, you know, mixed feeling on it. I really like, aesthetically, I love it. I'm a, I'm a sodbuster guy for sure. I was so excited when I first saw it. But the pinchability thing just was like, hmm, you know, and I was talking to Ben about it. I was like, man, I'm struggling to open this when I get sweaty. Um, you know, and I told myself, I'm going to carry it and just see what happens. And I carried it the next day and I needed to just open a lot of stuff that day. Um, I was getting ready for the move and I was, you know, and I just was playing with it and using it and really got a feel for how good this knife is and i noticed during that whole time i was sitting there fidgeting talking to the movers talking to whoever right and i have no problem opening this thing at all right so it really just comes down to when i'm like overthinking it and then i start getting sweaty or something i don't fucking know it's weird i'm weird this knife's not this knife's fantastic. So that's Pioneer Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. There's your honest review. It's what you guys will always get from me. Um, I love Ben over there. He's he's a cool dude. He's doing really cool stuff. Um, but, you know, he knows that I'm just going to tell you what I think. And that's what I think. I think it's fantastic. I think if you are a Jack Wolf fan, you should definitely pick one up. I think if... You're on the fence with Jack Wolf. You're a GEC guy, and you're like, ah, oh, man, I don't know if I should try these modern traditionals. You know, everybody's talking about Jack Wolf. Do it. This one, do it. Um, especially if you're a GEC guy. I think this one's going to bring in a lot of traditional guys. Um, I would say if you struggle, if you really struggle with knives that you can't pinch open, right? If you have weakish hands or, or you're older and, you know, you have um, arthritis or something like that, you know, this might not be the one for you, right? You're going to want something like this where it's just effortless to grab that blade, right? Checking the blade there because I really slammed it down on accident. Um you know, and, and I think that's fair. There's going to be different attributes to different knives. This one is an excellent, excellent user knife, but not the most pinchable. Yeah, it is what it is. And it's also, uh, it was an, an aesthetic and design choice from Ben. He had to balance a lot of details, right? If you try to bring this up, you have to bring this down. Yeah, like it just changes a lot of things. And so I think he did find a really good balance with it. And I think it came out fantastic. And it's freaking gorgeous. Just look at this. I'm going to shut up now. So um, I love you guys. I appreciate all of you. Uh, big shout out to Ben. 
thank you for supporting the channel, sending this my way to check out. Um, ben will be on the live stream Thursday night before the drop, so check that out. 9.45 p.m. Eastern will be the first live stream from the new crib, from the little, from the studio office. And, um, yeah, love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.